Oh, there it is. You won't believe what just came in the mail. I'm so excited. Hi, Ray here. I found this baby in a used camera store online in Montreal, Quebec, and I grabbed it right away. Anyway, let's open this baby up. I, I, oh, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? Okay, over the edge with that. Yeah, seems to be well packed. And here we go. Some more bubble wrap. I don't think there's any other box going with this. So I'm going to be careful. That should be good. Audio syncing noise. Be careful here. Oh, more, more yet. Yeah, we just got the camera here in the bubble wrap. Once again, I'm not gonna get too excited. Oh, and we've got. We've got I forgot how small these cameras were. Okay, we've got a free roll of um, whatever it is, Cine still. Oh, excellent. They gave me the batteries that go with this, which are, I forget what they're called, um, Super Alkaline 1.5 uh, AG13 LR44. Anyway, those are the only power that this camera takes. I've got a strap, but here's the camera itself. The Nikon FM. And this is amazing. This feels and let's see what's the number it's it's a um, it's a three which means that um, uh, you know the two is a little bit nicer because the two uh, you can you can you can advance the film and put that back the threes as I recall you have to leave that open I'm left-eyed so it's not so bad um, it looks in very good shape and it come it comes one of the things that really attracted me was that it comes with the 50 millimeter 1.8 e series lens and the e series lens is what i bought with my original nikon fm in these were released in 1977 i bought my first one in 1980 and i used that camera for years the nikon fm replaced the well it didn't replace but it came in in the prosumer level of cameras after the knicker mats and in fact i used a knicker mat in the early 70s and i have the cat photo to prove it uh, but mostly i was shooting theater and you know my friends and my life in general but the when the fm came out again affordable camera and i i jumped on the fm bandwagon and rode it so as i said the Nikon FM came in, released in 1977, as an alternative to the F series cameras. But a lot of pros, in fact, started picked up and started using this camera, at least as a second camera, because it is just a beautifully built, built like a tank camera. And oh, here's this here it was for the MD11 winder. And I, I certainly bought an MD-11 later on, and later on an MD-12. Because after this, I bought into the FM2 when it came out in, I guess it was around 82 or so. And I bought several of those. So I, I used this camera. I hauled it up mountains. I took it on mountaineering expeditions in all seasons, winter ski trips. And as well, I used it on the street. And incidentally, I made what has been my most successful photo in the genre, and that, by chance, accumulated an amazing backstory that you can check out on my blog if you wish. I used it in the studio and on location to make literally thousands of portraits, uh, catalog and magazine ads, as well as documenting my own personal life over more than a decade. Goodness knows how many shutter actuations that amounted to. Be 
the hell out of this to, to such a degree that I remember, particularly along the back here, I, uh, I used nail polish to, because this was totally worn out. I mean, here, this thing has just a couple of little scuff marks on it. This looks like it has not been highly used. Let's, uh, yep. Oh, listen to that shutter. I remember that shutter sound. And it looks to be, it looks to be very nice. So as I recall, yep, here we go, um, ASA from 12, ASA, ISO if you like, but it's ASA, as we used to say, from 12 to 3200, I believe. Oh, just a minute, do I have a problem here? Oh, this might have a problem. No, no, it is a little sticky. It is a little, yes, it is a little sticky. So the first, but there, 3200, yeah, it's a little bit sticky, but it does work. I think if I'm just, yeah, it's, it's working. And then of course, here is our, uh, then of course, yeah, you'll see the little red, that means now you can fire it when you advance it and if you now it won't fire this was changed with this when you when you got into the threes Be before that my original you could actually close that anyway it's not a, it's not a huge issue for me here we have you can do double exposures by just uh, holding that back and advancing it the let's see our one thing that used to happen with these is that these the spring would go in these and they'd flop around. That happened to mine. And this one is fine. This one seems to be fine. You open it up here to put your film in. And again, this looks very, very clean inside. Just looks, looks great. Yep, that looks really good. There hasn't been a lot of film through this camera. Uh, the batteries go in here, and I'll put those in later. Um, so yeah, here, the, here is the actual winder for the MD-11, or 12, I think. I think the 12, the MD-11 and the MD-12 worked on these. Uh, certainly worked. I had both at certain, at certain times. And here is the hot shoe, and that sinks, your sink speed here, which is actually in red, uh, is 125, of course, and lower than that. Here's the little mark for the film plane. And, oh, there's a nice thing. Right here, this little rubber thing on the, on the viewfinder is still there. Um, mine, mine was gone after being bashed around in the mountains for a while. I can't remember if I ever replaced it, but this one is still good and the, and the rubber seems fine. So I think I've got myself a real good find here. But we won't know until we put some film through it. And I will definitely come back and with a video of a shoot. We'll take this out for a shoot. And I'll show you how things go. And I'll show you the results as well. Maybe we'll uh, use this 800... Oh, it's tungsten. It's, it's tungsten film. So that's balanced for tungsten lighting. So um, 800 a ASA uh, and tungsten. So we could shoot indoors under tungsten light with it. I don't know whether I'll do that. It's good until 2022, so <clears throat> anyway, I will go out and do a shoot with this camera. I'm really excited. Already, it's um, <laughs> it's bringing back memories. I remember that was a bit of a that was a bit of a trick, because I'm left-eyed. And, um, you know, if I was right-eyed, it wouldn't be such an issue, but I'm left-eyed, so that's, that's right there. And since I've had one of these, I've started wearing glasses. So uh, it's going to be interesting to get used to that. I'm not going to be as fast. Maybe I need to get myself an MD-11 winder uh, if I can find one. I think they're out there. Yeah, this is great. My 
original FM, as I said, with the nail polish on it, that it really just felt like an old friend. Unfortunately, tragically, it was stolen, and I replaced it. Then the uh, insurance paid for a new camera, and I replaced it with an FM2, and in fact bought two. I, I, I remember I paid for an extra FM2, so I bought two FM2s, because of course I'd, um, yeah, I'd lost the FM, and an FM2 in that theft, as a matter of fact. So I ended up with two FM2s and an MD12 winder, and I really regret selling that FM2 about 15 years ago. It was in mint condition. Anyway, bygones be bygones, I now have myself my original FM2 camera. <laughs> it's a beauty. And this camera, it, it really was the beginning of my professional career that started in around 1982. 1982, I started shooting professionally after selling some of my expedition photographs. And this was my camera. This was the camera that launched my <laughs> career. So yes, the uh, E-Series lens, as I said. My first lens with a camera, this is exactly as I bought it. And you can look inside there. Everything looks pretty good. That glass is absolutely pristine. I will put a protective filter on there. So yeah, that looks um, that looks very good. And inside the camera also looks incredibly clean. And if we open it up, open the back up. So yes, it was the FM2 that got the titanium shutter and that upped the top shutter speed to 1 4,000th of a second whereas this one tops out at 1 1,000th. So that was one a big jump. Uh, something that I haven't talked about is, and I, and I will put the batteries in and show you this, but this camera got the gallium arsenide meter. Uh, so that was, that was another big jump from the knicker mats. I forget what there was, they, but this is much more sensitive. And it has three little, as I remember, LEDs in five stops. So your center at 18% uh, gray and then two stops either side of that and it was it was very fast and and intuitive in fact i think by the threes they had speeded those up even more with some breakthrough so I'm, i i became so used to that metering system that i'm, I'm sure that i'm going to get right back into it so in my excitement I totally was not paying attention and this in fact already has a set of batteries installed so the other batteries were thanks to the camera store that I got this from whose name escapes me actually ca a camera cinema or something so there's already a set of batteries installed in here and I just really was not paying attention so we'll reinstall those batteries make sure we don't cross thread that let's be very careful on that a little tricky but once you get it once you get it in there we're good so yes that was a second set of spare batteries that I'm sure if my memory serves me well that we won't be needing those for a long, long time. So indeed, yes, there I can see it. There's my LEDs. So we're at 3200 ASA, 125th of a second, open at 1.8, and I can see that I could actually shut this down to, hmm, well, if I was going on a, a straight on center, then we'd be looking at uh, 2.8. So 125th of a second, 2.8 at ISO or ASA 3200. That would work and after messing around with the camera a little bit more my initial thought that there was something wrong with the ASA dial here it's not it was just a matter of getting used to it it, it works perfectly there's no issue whatsoever I just wasn't pulling it up you have to pull it up quite hard to change that so everything is good there so as I said I'm gonna take this baby out and we're gonna do a shoot in the meantime if you found this video useful or interesting, please give it a thumbs up 
And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so and hit that notification bell to be notified of upcoming videos. So yeah, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you what this baby can do.